is, and what a day that will be. <clears throat> this one's out of the hymnal if you want to follow in there. What a day that will be when we get to see him face to face. What a wonderful day. We got a couple minutes. Joni, can we go back to number 57? We have a couple minutes here, so we're going to sing that one one more time. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Okay? All right. to see everyone. We're glad we have air conditioning in the sanctuary, right? <laughs> There's a whole lot of years we didn't. So, 
On days like this, we're especially thankful for that. So, a few announcements here before we go on with our worship service. Uh, the care center, that's in there somewhere, they are having uh, selling mental wolves face masks. Right, here's one. Maroon, it says mental wolves in gold there for $6. That's just as a fundraiser for our care center. We have a bunch here at the church, so you can see Jennifer. Um, if you want one, $6. And there are places where we have to wear them, right? So we, why not support our care center when we do that? A couple other announcements. Meals on Wheels, it is our church's turn to deliver those here coming in September. So as always, there's a calendar in the narthex there on the bulletin board. It, it'd be great if we could fill that up today um, I know the first isn't till next week, Tuesday, but we get that retyped and we give it to the care center ahead of time so that if one of us happens to forget that it was our day, then they can know they know who to call. So that has happened. It has happened to me. It's very embarrassing. <laughs> so thanks for helping with that. Also, Sunday School Teachers, Christian Education Committee, we have our meetings this Wednesday night, Teachers 6.30, Christian Ed Committee 7.30, as we are, let's see, about three weeks away from Sunday School kickoff. So we're excited about that. And on that note, once we get to that Sunday, the 13th of September, we, we, have, we do offer nursery there for the little ones, which would be under three years old. Some of those parents are teaching. Some of the parents just want to come to Sunday school. So we do need helpers for that. Uh, Ann Schultz sort of coordinates that. How, how many? We try to have it so you just have to help one Sunday out of each month. How many helpers do we need? Four, okay, <laughs> we need four. So think about that. If you could give a Sunday there from 9.15 to 10.15 approximately, we would really appreciate that. Also, last Sunday, if you were here, you know that Taylor Anderson shared a little bit about her mission work uh, up at the University of Minnesota on that campus with the Navigators. This is her second year of doing that. And we left the offering plate out for that Again today, we thought maybe there were some who weren't here last Sunday that wanted to give. So that's the offering plate at the back. The, the offering box is as usual. That's for our regular offerings to the church. So if you think about that. We were, if you were thinking, I thought we were supposed to have a baptism today. We were supposed to have a uh, little Oliver Wade's baptism today, but there's some illness in the family, so we have to postpone that to another time. Also, the gladiolas here, the pink ones on my left, those are from Harriet's garden. So thank you, Harriet, for sharing those with us. They're such a beautiful, beautiful flower that God has given us to enjoy. Well, the rest of the announcements you read, please, as you have time. There's a lot more in there, and so take time to do that. Let's bow our heads in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, it is always a joy to be here in your presence, to lift our voices in praise as we're going to sing very shortly how great thou art. And truly it is wonderful, Lord, as we consider all the worlds, the, the galaxies, the planets, the universe, the solar systems that you have made. It is truly incredible. We hear the rolling thunder as we sing. We see thy power throughout the universe displayed and we love this hymn and we love to praise you as we sing it with all of our hearts. And yet, you placed us on this planet we call Earth. Out of all the planets in the universe, you chose this one for us to live, to fellowship with you, for you to send your only begotten son to, to become man and to take our place. We have so much to praise you for and we do so, Lord, this day. So thank you for moving in our midst in a mighty, mighty way, pouring out your spirit upon us in Jesus' name.
Amen. And so, how great thou art. I said to Joanne I, this week, I said, it seems like we only sing this at funerals, which is good, it's a, but it's a beautiful hymn, and so we hardly ever sing it in Sunday church. So we're gonna sing it. I was thinking back to it. I know on the Sunday in January of 2004, it's been a while ago, when I came to do my trial sermon, I requested, could we sing How Great Thou Art? And we did, and the tears were flowing. So let's stand and sing this beautiful hymn, How Great Thou Art.
Amen is right. Yes, praise the Lord. That was some beautiful singing right there. Unto our God and our Father, praise the Lord. Thank you, Joanne. Well, take a moment. You can give each other an air high five or elbow bump or whatever. Say good to see you today. Amen. I'm so glad we get to sing, aren't you? Praise the Lord. Some requests here, prayer uh, that I have written down for our joys and concerns. Um, So uh, Troy Heckenleibel, he's going overseas to Africa here in September, right? From Minnesota, they'll fly out. I'm sorry, how did I get Minnesota out of that? Next Sunday. Okay, spend the, next Sunday they fly out, then about a month in Texas because you got to go through the two-week quarantine and whatever and then fly over. So I know there have been some others in, a, in the community or relatives who've told me that they have someone going over as well. Is there, did anybody here that has told me that? Melanie. Jonathan Dingman is going. Okay, Mara's husband, all right. And in to Africa, okay, all right. And it seems like there's others, maybe, oh, yeah. He is, this is Jenna's husband, Willard and Darlene's grandson-in-law, so Kim's daughter, son-in-law is already over there. Okay, tell me his name again. Derek Fisher, Derek Fisher. okay, all right, thank you. Oh, Victor Sechki, Sechi from the maintenance man from the care center is going or is there? Going. Oh, they did. Oh, they postponed his. <clears throat> okay. Okay. All right. So we will lift them up in our prayers, certainly. Um, Marilee Hauk, she had this surgery on her lower back called a laminectomy on Friday. Uh, it went very well. She got to come home yesterday late afternoon, and I didn't talk to her this morning, but they were pleased with how everything went. So continue to lift her up in that recovery time in your prayers. Also, her daughter, Glenda, who has had cervical cancer, they've done chemo and they've done radiation and things are going very well in that process for Glenda. Les Melhoff, he was moved this week to a rehab facility in Sioux Falls and is doing better and we're possibly gonna be able to see him tomorrow. Uh, we'll see how that works. So continue to lift him up in your prayers. Also, Matha Wright is improved um, uh, and is in swing bed unit. Matha Hess, sorry, sorry. Matha Hess, my mouth goes faster than the brain. <laughs> Matha Hess is in swing bed now in Yankton, so that's a good thing. Um, let me see, just continued prayers for Jimmy Whale and... Uh, on a note here today to, yeah, this is, it was 10 years ago today, I guess, when Mary Handel's sister Gail lost her life in that house explosion here in town. So we're praying for you and the family. And it, yeah, that was a hard time. So we know where she's at. Amen. Anybody else? Anything? Over here? Yeah, Pat. Okay, all right. He's home though, but okay. All right, prayers for Lee Palmerville. He's been real sick the last few days. Sorry to hear that. Okay. Okay, over on here. Yes, Ashley Holdsworth. All right, this he's probably not. Oh, oh, 
goodness. What's his first name? Colin? Okay. This would be on uh, Kevin Holsworth's side. There's a... Myron's grandson? Okay. Uh, Colin, he's 12, 13 years of old. Years old, he's fighting lung cancer. And um, that's young. Yeah, he has to have a, now a double, double lung biopsy this week. Okay. Pray for Colin. Carl. Oh, yeah, thank you. Terry Seiler. Yes. Um, so... Yeah, just continued prayers for Terry. Um, she, I know they had a consultation this last Thursday with the radiologist. Not sure what was decided. I did talk to her Friday, and um, she's have two, weeks two, two weeks of radiation. Oh, okay. Two, two what? Okay, two weeks, five days each of radiation coming up, starting. We're not sure. Waiting to hear. Waiting to hear. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Let's bow our heads here. Lord, there is much always to bring before your throne, and you tell us. You tell us to ask and seek and knock, even though you already know everything about our lives, but you tell us to come to you. And so we do. We pray for this boy, Colin here who is battling this lung cancer and has the biopsies in both lungs coming this week. And Lord, that sounds like a difficult situation. But we lift him before your throne and his family and all that they're going through and ask that you comfort them and strengthen them and minister to them and this boy through this time, Lord. And we stand with them in prayer as we do all of these others asking for your healing power to be at work within his young body. Lord, you are a miracle-working God. We know that. We pray the same for Terry Seiler as she has another round of chemo, I believe, this Thursday and then radiation coming at some point. We lift her up. We lift up Jimmy Whale as he's in the midst of a stronger round of chemotherapy that started this past week. Father, uh, we pray for Les Melhoff and thank you that he has seen improvements there. And we rejoice with them in that. We pray for Marilee Hauk as she recovers from her surgery on Friday. We pray for Lee Palmerville, Lord, and are sorry to hear about a difficult week that he has had. And we pray, Lord, healing and wholeness and strength to him. And thank you for Pat and her sister Jackie as they help him along at this time. Lord, for Matha Hess and John too, we just lift both of them up as they are in the recovery mode. Uh, for uh, Zachary and Caitlin and their family, we lift them up and ask for healing to that household. So much more, Lord, we pray for each of these and the more listed in the bulletin. Just thanking you for your power at work. Lord, Help us to be able to minister to these as you lead by your spirit, whether it's a meal or a gift card or whatever it might be. Lord, we, we could use some rain, that's for sure, Father, and you know that as well. We thank you for the crops in this area that are looking beautiful, but we know and you know that moisture is what is required to bring them to fruition. So we trust you in that and thank you that you've spared us from damaging storms in this area. We pray for Iowa and through there that had such difficult storms a week or two ago. We lift up that, that region of our country. Father, thank you for our troops. Uh, we pray for these. Troy and um, uh, Mara's husband. Jonathan, yes, uh, and um, who's already there? Somebody. Derek, Derek. Derek, yes, Fisher, thank you. Lord, and many more there in Africa and other countries of our world, we pray your hand of protection upon them. For those going, for those serving here at home, 
Thank you for giving your angels charge over them to guard and keep them in all of their ways. Lord, we continue to pray for our health care workers. We have several in our congregation, nurses, uh, doctors, um, caregivers at our care center. Keep them safe, Lord. We thank you for their serving so faithfully in difficult times. Father, I want to lift up two unspoken requests. You know who each of these are facing some difficult health situations. And I thank you for your power working in their lives by the Spirit of God that you give them wisdom and the doctors as well that they are meeting with. We thank you for all of these things and, uh, and many more I'm sure that were not mentioned. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to read from Psalm 16, verses 1 and 2 and 11 before we have our offering time. This says, Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, You are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. And then verse 11, For you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Amen. Let's stand. We'll sing the doxology here this morning. If you'd stand, please. Father, as we do bring our offerings and our tithes to you into this storehouse, we do so with great thanksgiving. Lord, for as we just read, apart from you, we have no good thing. And that is true because you are our very life, our strength. You, Jesus, are our Redeemer and our Savior and Lord. And so we do give with joy and thanksgiving and in addition to all that, as it, it said, Lord, as the psalmist said, in your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand pleasures forevermore. And so we thank you for your goodness to us in so many ways, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray together now the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. If the children want to come now for the Kingdom Kids time. Hey, when we're done, will you take that back? When we're done. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Well, good morning, boys and girls. You can sit down. How are you today? Is everybody doing good? Did you have a good week at school? Yes, that's great. Well, are there any first graders in here today? Come on up, Paisley. Are you in first grade? Laura, come on up. Anybody else in first grade? How about second grade? Any second graders? How about third graders? Want to come up? I need one more. Oh, there we go. If you want to. There we go. Good job. Okay, you all be my helpers in a little bit and hold up these. Well, today we're going to talk about something that will help us when we're in school. Last week we brought our supplies, right? And we talked about the fruit of the Spirit. And not only do we need our pencils and papers, but we need joy and peace and patience and all of those things. Well, this week we're gonna, I'm going to talk about an acronym. 
that will help us with prayer. So this is our first letter. What is it? C. C. C stands for, reminds us, to confess our sins to God. You know, boys and girls, you and I, we do things that are wrong. And when we do that, we need to confess them to God. Sometimes we need to confess to our parents if we sin or disobey them or, or our, our, our siblings if we're getting mean to them. We need to tell them we're sorry. But always, who do we need to confess to? Jesus, Jesus right. And he'll wash us away, right? So C stands for confess. Everybody say that. Confess. Confess our sins, right? When we're talking to God, when we're praying to him, that's our first thing. What letter is this? H stands for honor. When we're having our prayer time with God, we need to honor him in, during that time. And that means saying things like, I love you, God. You are amazing. You are wonderful. What else can we tell God? What are some things? Well, you think about that later. There's all kinds of things. Just praising him like we do in our praise songs and our worship songs. So first we need to confess. Then we spend time honoring God, telling him how much we love him. Next is letter A. A stands for ask. You know, like Pastor Mike said in the scripture, ask, seek, ask, seek, knock, ask. <laughs> Ask, seek, and knock. Knock, ask, and seek. That's talking about talking to God about what you need. Asking him maybe to help you in school. Asking him to help you take the test. Asking him to help you in sports or in your music or whatever it is you do. We can spend some of our time asking God. Asking him what our friends need. Asking him what our families need, right? So first we confess, honor, ask and then we can end our prayer time with being thankful that's the letter t t stands for thankful what are some things that we're thankful for family. our family we are thankful to god for our family jesus. for jesus you betcha we are so glad jesus is our savior Our food. We need our food to help us be strong. Kitties. What? Kitties. Kitties for our pets that are so fun. For, roofs over our heads. for what? For roofs over our heads. For, head. for places to live. So many things. So when we have our prayer time with God, when you're at school, remember you can. Now let's say them all together. All these letters chat. put together say spell chat. Chat with God. And I made little papers for you. I don't know if some of you got them. They're laminated back on that table over there. You've got it. There you go, Addison. You can take those to school. You can put them on your refrigerator at home just to help you to remember, spend time with God. He wants you to chat with him, okay? All right, let's pray. Father, we're so grateful to you. We're thankful for all so many things, being in school with our teachers again and our friends again and keeping us safe. And we just thank you that you want us as children also to be talking with you, to chat. So help us to remember this acronym and what these letters stand for. Confess, honor, ask, and be thankful when we're at school, when we're at home, wherever we go. And bless these kids. Help them to be a blessing to those around them this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, you can get your papers. Denise, here you go, Raylan. Okay, thank you, Anne. We're going to sing number 643, O oh Lord, you are beautiful, and he is. 643. <clears throat>
bow our heads in prayer once more, please. Yes, it is, Lord. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. You are all-powerful. Jesus, you are mighty to save. You are our Savior. And we thank you for your word. As we feed upon it, you said, Jesus, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And how blessed we are to have your word to, for us today, that we can read it, that we can speak it, that we can share it with one another as friend with friend. And so I ask again for you to open the eyes of our understanding. I ask, Lord, that by your Spirit you would challenge us today to be doers of your word and not just hearers only. In Jesus' name, amen. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1, verse 1 through 14, that's where we'll read today. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 1. This is Luke writing by the Spirit of God, Luke the physician. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving, giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. That's good to know, isn't it? Yes, that he was alive and he is alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, son of James. That's 11 of the 12, right? Listed there. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Amen. Now today we're going to focus mostly on those last three verses, but I wanted to read that whole part of that. Just a, a review from last Sunday, we were in Numbers chapter 21. Remember the children of Israel, they were sinning, they were grumbling, complaining against Moses and against God. We have no water, we have no food, and we hate this miserable, wretched manna. That manna was supernaturally coming from heaven every day to feed and sustain them. That manna was a type of Jesus Christ foreshadowing to Jesus who is the living bread. So when they said, and we hate this miserable, wretched manna, that 
was a serious thing to say. And so we read, God sent these poisonous snakes among them, right? Many of them were dying. We talked about how long did it take for them to come to Moses and repent and say, we've sinned. Remember I compared with our nation, how long will it take for our nation to come to the point and say, we have sinned against you, God. Forgive us, heal us. Moses prayed to the Lord on their behalf, told him to make that pole with the bronze serpent, and whoever would look to that and live would be healed. Again, that serpent, God used that, again, as a type of Christ. I can't go into all that. You'd have to listen to last Sunday. I mentioned in closing, the answer for America is Jesus. You might say, oh, God, that's so simple, Pastor Mike. Yeah, who doesn't know that? Well, a lot of people don't know that. Probably half the nation does not know that. The answer is Jesus, and that's why we pray so earnestly for an outpouring upon this nation, for a great awakening to turn the hearts of the people. There's got to be a heart change to turn the nation back to God. It's, it, politics alone cannot do it. We all have strong feelings on things, and I do too, but that alone is not the answer. It's prayer for hearts to be changed. And that leads me into today where we're going to focus then on prayer. It's so important. See, when we look back to the time of Christ and the Roman Empire was the world power, it was not a pleasant place on the planet to live under the dominion and domination of the Roman Empire. They were cruel. But if you didn't go with their flow, you were dead that fast. There was no mercy. Christians thrown to the lions and just ate alive and uh, tortured beyond. Crucifixions all the time happening. There were no human rights. There was no bill of rights that we enjoy today. It was just ruthless. But in the middle of this time, God in Christ comes to live in a human body on this earth. And what does he do? Many things we know, but one of the things he does is he shows his disciples the importance of prayer. He models it before them. Prayer. He didn't go after the Roman Empire, uh, did he? No, he didn't. He tried to teach the early church, and they got it, that in order to be God-dependent people, Prayer has got to be a priority in our lives individually and corporately. It has to be. But even, they they were growing impatient too. You think about it here. In Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 11, this is, that that part of it is right before his ascension into heaven. And so, That was only 40 days. His ascension was just 40 days after his resurrection. They were already getting impatient. Verse 6, it says this. So when they met together, this is right before his ascension, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? See, they only waited 40 days. They thought, surely, 40 days, I mean a month and a half almost, we have waited. Surely, Jesus, now you're the resurrected Lord, you're in your glorified body, surely now you're gonna overthrow Roman domination and return the land of Israel to the Jewish people. Is it now the time? We get just as impatient, don't we, with things today. He says, no, verse seven, You know what, guys, ladies, there was 120 of them there. It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. In other words, quit worrying about that. I got a job for you to do on this earth. And verse 8, he says, but you are going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, number one, and you are going to be witnesses for me. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. 
right? In Menno, Scotland, all of it, wherever we're all from, Tabor, Sioux Falls, the surrounding area, that job assignment is the same today. Des Moines, wherever. Be witnesses for me there, then in your state, in your United States, and to the ends of the earth. So, and then he ascends. So let's get here to number one. His command to them that day and to us was to wait. To wait, he says. At the end of Luke's gospel, so I told you Luke, the doctor, was inspired to record the Gospel of Luke, also the book of Acts. He ends the Gospel of Luke with the ascension of Jesus into heaven. And he says there, when Jesus was talking, verse 49, Luke 24, I'm going to send you what my Father has promised. Who was that? The Holy Spirit, thank you. That was rather very weak. The Holy Spirit is who the the Father had promised. I'm going to send him to you, but stay in the city, that's Jerusalem. In other words, you gotta wait there until you've been clothed with that power from on high. Then we come to Acts chapter one, verse four. Same thing, I read it. On one occasion, Jesus is eating with them and he gives them this command. Listen, you are not to leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift. Who's the gift? Ah, thank you. Hope you weren't sleeping on me already. We're not even five minutes into the sermon. Come on. Wait for the gift my Father has promised, which you've heard me speak about. Okay, his command was to wait then and now. Where? Letter A. Where? At a common place. A common place is where? Verse 12 now. Here we are. Acts chapter 1, verse 12. Jump over to there. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying, to this common place. So, the Mount of Olives. Luke's gospel tells us more specifically on the Mount of Olives, it was near the city, the village, really it was a village called Bethany. So Bethany is located on the backside of the Mount of Olives. We did, when we were there, we didn't get to see where that village was. We were on the front side, I guess you'd call it, of the Mount of Olives where you look uh, and, and there is Jerusalem in all of its glory. And it is an amazing, amazing sight to see when you come up on the Mount of Olives and get there and beautiful. It's beautiful to see. So a Sabbath day journey, that was 2,000 cubits. What's that to us? About three quarters of a mile. That, according to the Old Testament, that was as far as they could travel on the Sabbath day. It is said that even, I showed you that picture uh, of, of a thought of how the 12 tribes of Israel could have been laid out according to Scripture. I showed that to you last Sunday in the shape of a cross. So amazing. When, yeah, there you go. The, the population of the tribes are given in the Old Testament. And that is how this diagram, someone came up with this, of how possibly it could have looked, shaped like a cross. And in the middle is the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant. So it is said, though, that the farthest tents out on any direction were no further than 2,000 cubits. So where could they travel on the Sabbath day? To the tabernacle. Now, I, that had to be pretty squishy if they all were right there around it that close, a couple million of them, they estimated to be. So there was reason. Of course, back to the ascension. The ascension, is that on a Sunday, ascension day? It's not. It's always on a Thursday because it's 40 days after the resurrection of Christ. So that's how it figures. So that's how far it was. The room, let me mention that, the common place where they had to gather that was most likely, I can't say 100%, but most scholars feel that when they went to that 
upstairs to the room that that was the same room where they had the last supper with Jesus Christ the night before his cross, before the cross. The, the word the, it doesn't say they went upstairs to a room where they were staying. No, it says the room. In English, we call that a definite article in Greek too, I guess. So meaning it was that very specific place. Same as we look at John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He didn't say, I am a way, I am a truth, I am a life. A lot of people think that's what he said. They try to twist it to that. Lots of people. But it is not. He said very specifically. So there they were together in that. When they went to this common place to wait, they knew what they were supposed to do. Go there and wait for the promise of the Father. Did they know how the Holy Spirit was gonna be given to them? They didn't know how it was gonna happen. All they knew was something was going to happen, and they went there by faith. He had told them some things about the Holy Spirit on the night before the cross in John's Gospel, actually John 14, verse 16 and 17, when he's with them that night, he says, you know what? The 12 there, at one point Judas had left, probably by this time actually, but he says, I'm gonna ask the Father, he's gonna give you another counselor, that's the Holy Spirit, so you, here you see the Trinity in action, right? Jesus is talking, I'm gonna ask the Father, he's gonna give you another counselor, the Holy Spirit. He's gonna be with you forever. Now listen to this part. The world cannot, the world meaning unbelievers, cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but listen, but you know him, it's before the cross, you know him, for he lives with you and he will be in you. And that in you was gonna happen on the day of Pentecost. They were gonna be filled with the Holy Spirit. John 16, still the night before the cross. Again, they're not wanting him to go. He's trying to explain what's gonna happen that night. They're not getting it. They're not believing it. We don't want you to go, Jesus. And he says, look, you guys, it is for your own good that I go. <clears throat> Unless I go away, the counselor, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. And so, we see corporate prayer that night. We see from there they go to the Garden of Gethsemane where they had often went two times in Scripture. That garden is, is referred to as where they went as usual for prayer. When Judas came to, with the troops to arrest him, it says Judas knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples for prayer. They knew the common place. The garden was one of them. The upper room was another one of them. What would our common place be? One of those places should be this local church right here. Yes, when we come together on Sunday morning, but more than that, should be other times that we come. We do have, if you know, well, you should know, Thursdays at one o'clock, we have a prayer group. Small, it's small, about six that come. Now I realize work schedule, it doesn't work for everybody. Maybe you're thinking, well, Pastor Mike, I don't, I don't wanna come to that because I don't wanna pray out loud in front of people. You know what, you don't have to. You do not have to. The other prayer time is 8.30 Sunday morning, right here. Some, Today we had, what, five? Sometimes we have 10. It varies. A prayer time corporately together. Those are important times. So letter B, let's go on here. So where was a common place? Letter B, who, who's, who is involved? A common people. A common group of people. And he lists them there in verse 13, second half of that verse. Those present were. Here's the 11 of the 12 disciples. I'm not gonna read them all. Of course, we know why Judas Iscariot is not there. He had hung himself by this point. He's out of the picture. 
But in addition to the 12 were some of the women who had ministered to Jesus, right? Throughout his, those years of ministry, his mother Mary was there and his brothers. And verse 15 would tell us there was 120 of them in, gathered together in that upper room, constantly in prayer. They were serious about this thing. They had seen the resurrection. Now they're living after it. <clears throat> but let me back up to the commonplace of prayer real quick. Um, as I think about that just over my years and God leading me, pulling me, as you know, I've said like a stubborn mule into the ministry, that's a whole nother deal. But first in Brookings, as I, that the church I went to, there, there was a place of prayer in the basement of that church that was amazing. Sometimes it was a group. Sometimes I would just go there myself early in the morning before class because my apartment with two other guys, one bedroom and one room, very small, and there was no privacy there. God did some amazing things during that time. Then I move on down to seminary at Rama, where the place of prayer there was a prayer school every day. Classes were done by 11.30 or 12, and prayer school started at 1 o'clock, went to 2 or 2.30, and most always I could get classes and prayer school in, and then I went to my job till 11 or 12 at night. That was my day. That prayer school was an amazing time. Powerful times of prayer. And so it goes. Back to the common people, though. These are just ordinary people, the 12 fishermen, most of them. Some, you got Simon the Zealot. What was a zealot? Zealots were, in a, they were so um, on fire, determined that they were gonna overthrow Roman rule. They were almost like secret terrorists, really. They were involved in great violence, acts of terror against the Romans, soldiers and everything, whatever they could do. Obviously, Simon had, Jesus had, Okay, Simon, you gotta step her down here a little bit. We're not going out just trying to kill Romans. They can be saved too, right? Uh, so rethink this deal, all right? The tax collector, Matthew, I wonder if Nicodemus the Pharisee was in that group. I just got a strong hunch in my heart that he was. I don't have proof of it. We do know he received Christ as Savior. The evidence was he was with uh, Joseph of Arimathea to take the body of Christ and lay it in the tomb. Nicodemus was there. So, and the women, they were there. These people were God-dependent. If we are God-dependent, that means we take time uh, in prayer. Listen, listen to this quote by a book I was reading. It's called Teach Them to Pray. One of the pleasures of God is to take ordinary, common sinners, to redeem them, and then empower them with the Holy Spirit to walk in God dependency. And the clearest mark of their humble, God-dependent spirit is their dedication to prayer. Their dedication to prayer. That's such a good quote. So here also Jesus' brothers, real quick, let me throw this in. Just six months before the cross, they are still not believing in him. John 7 verse 5 records that. Even his own brothers didn't believe in him. Earlier than that, Mark 3, 21, uh, there it says his family comes to a place where he was teaching. They wanted to take him because they said he's out of his mind. But at the cross and that through the resurrection, they saw the light. They're listed four brothers, James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and sisters. James and Jude, God used to write two books of the New Testament. Pretty amazing. See, devotion, here's a quote there too going down. Devotion to prayer turns common people, that's us, right? We are just common, ordinary people turns common people into uncommon servants of God. So this congregation should be our common people when we come together for prayer. Let us see the what. We gotta be constant in prayer. 
We really have to be constant in prayer. Verse 14 says, all these, this 120 of them, they all join together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. I like a couple other translations. New American Standard says, these all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer. The ESV says, all these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer. In this 10-day period, that's what they were doing. Did they know it was gonna be 10 days? They did not know that. Jesus had said to them, in a few days. Now to me even, when I think of a few days, 10 seems longer than a few. As I think of a few, I think, oh, five, six days. That's all he said to them. He didn't give them specifics. And he doesn't give us a lot of specifics either about what the future holds. To some degree, yes. We know we're waiting for the rapture of the church. And then the tribulation. And then the second coming of Christ. And then the millennial reign. We know that. But we just don't know when. That's why you got to be ready every day you live. If it was today, would you go? Would you be caught up as a believer in the air, raptured? Well, you better know that. Well, I don't, how can I know that? I'm no good. I'm not either. Guess what? It's not based on your goodness. It's based on your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you know him as your Lord and Savior and you're doing your best to live for him, then you're going. You're going. All right, so what, what were they praying for? No, they, back to that, no, they did not know it would happen in 10 days. They were just praying, praying, praying. I had said to Ann yesterday, I sort of talking to her about what, what the message I was giving, and I said, what I would really like to do is, could we have a challenge if we did five days Five days as a church to come together to pray for maybe an hour. And then I'm like, when would that work? When would that work? And I don't have the answer fully. I mean, it could be throughout the day, but it'd be better as a group. I said, could we do it at eight o'clock? Well, there are lots of people who are starting work at eight o'clock. Could we do it at noon, from noon to one? If people's lunch hours, some, all our teachers, so that doesn't work. Could it be in the evening? Well, now we're full into all the school activities. Could it be six in the morning? I'd do it whenever. So I don't have the answer for that yet. I'm still praying about it. I thought maybe one week we could do it at eight in the morning and get who could come. Maybe another week later we could try it over the noon hour. So if you've got thoughts on that, you let me know. Would we do it? For five days, would we do it? Something to think about. Yes, you pray at home. I know you are and should and do. But there's something about corporate prayer together as well. Okay, more than Sunday morning worship, I'm talking. What do you think they were praying for? Just to wrap this up. They were praying about the coming of the Holy Spirit. Number one. They were praying, I believe, about that command that Jesus gave them. You are to be witnesses for me. We need to be praying about that. How can we witness to those around us? They were praying about probably the need to replace Judas Iscariot, which they did if you read on further than where I read. And more than that. So prayer should be our constant practice. To finish up your outline there. Prayer should be our constant practice. See, there was a common place, there was a common group of people, and the common practice, prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, it shouldn't be so difficult to find a time to do this, but yet, Lord, our lives get so busy and filled with so many things I pray that we can find a time or two to do this challenge in the weeks to come. 
that we would take it up and just seek you for our nation, for our local church, for our community, and whatever else you lead, Lord. And I pray, if nothing else, that this stirs in us a conviction in our homes to be people of earnest prayer throughout our days. And I thank you for your spirit prompting us to do that more. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So our closing hymn, <clears throat> It Is Well With My Soul. Now, some of you know about this hymn, probably a lot of you do, because I say it usually when we sing it, but maybe not everyone. This guy, Horatio Spafford, had went through incredible heartaches and challenges. Losing their son, they lived back in the late 1700s, I think it was, losing their young son first to an illness. Then uh, they were planning a vacation, him and his wife, their three daughters, over in Europe, He's a lawyer. He got busy with a case at the last minute. He says to wife and daughters, you go on ahead of me. Go over there. When I'm done with this, I'll catch a ship and I'll join you over there. And as they get closer to, to Europe, they encounter a horrible storm. The ship sinks. All three daughters drown. The wife is saved alone. Can you imagine the heartache and what it, at that day, it was telegraph. All she said was, was shipwrecked or like at sea. I'm saved alone. It is well with my soul. Put yourself in that place. And so as Horatio gets on the next ship and goes over, and they tell him about this is probably, this is where it happened approximately, where your daughter's drowned and many more he was inspired to write this hymn. We think about our trials that we're facing and think about the, when these words were written. Pretty powerful. Let's stand, please. <clears throat>
best, and I've said many times, I, should, I try to say it every time, the only way we can say that is in Christ. Because without Jesus, it is not well with our soul, but in him it is. Please receive the benediction. And now may the Lord go with you. May he go ahead of you to guide you, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you his peace. Amen. And as we do, we will sing God Bless America as a prayer for our nation. You may be seated. Thanks for the beautiful music. Have a wonderful day.